So if we go um, straight on to question one, the UDP takes a matrix approach to new entertainment uses, um, and the matrix is provided in um, the previous page of the briefing note on page four, um, which, which varies depending upon location, size, and type of entertainment use, as well as a number of individual policy criteria, including impact on residential amenity. Um, so the questions are, should the City Council continue with this matrix policy approach, differentiating between the stress areas, central activity zone and elsewhere, and size and type of entertainment use proposed? Um, and then another question is, should the size thresholds be changed? So would anybody like to kick off on that one? I can so. um, The, the um, question of the, um, the, the, the stress area is one that my trust, the St. James's Con uh, Conservation Trust, has been banging on about for six years since I've been with them. Um, to us, it seems a very artificial board. If you look at our area, which is the core area of St. James, we're right on the edge of the West End stress area. And that really doesn't give us the flexibility that we want. If you look at the crime statistics for the stress area, it, it seems very, very little difference to the eastern corner of our area. And so we're not really getting a fair deal. We, we think that in our area we should have the protection of the West End stress area, perhaps not for the whole of our area, but for a significant part. So the present limits of the stress area do not suit us. Now, I know that this would be an awful problem for Westminster City Council to change its stress areas. Um, they're both used, as you know, for planning and for the, the licensing and to go into the realms of trying to enlarge the, the stress areas would make it very difficult. But there's no doubt that we f find it very difficult to get the protection that we require on, the, on the, what we'd call our buffer zone. That's what I really got to say at the moment. Anybody else like to comment on that? Um, yeah, I think I'd sort of try, like to echo the, the gentleman's comments that the, the designations do seem slightly arbitrary in that you can have a you can have a use that, if located outside a stress area, can have a much greater impact upon residential amenity and issues of, 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 of premises management um, c compared to if it were located within an area that already has a high concentration of, of uses. You can imagine a new um, a new nightclub or a new pub in a in a quiet residential area outside the CAS would have a much greater impact upon upon a greater number of people than yet another pub or yet another nightclub in in, in one of the stress areas. Um, and I think I think an approach whereby um, uh, applications are judged on their merits, albeit one whereby maybe you're taking you're taking the policies that would apply under the highest taste policy at the moment as your as your norm, may be more appropriate. Um, than, than separating the city into three areas whereby um, a negative use in any of those three areas can have, have just, as, uh, just as adverse impacts. Possibly. Um, Councillor Lewis has, has asked if may, maybe it would be quite good if you could actually say who you are before you start to speak. That would be helpful just even for just taking the minutes. Thank you. If there aren't any any other issues on the matrix, unless unless you would, we were just discussing the first the first question on the existing um, UDP approach using the matrix of different areas. Um, if people supported that or thought it should be revised and 
including the size thresholds in that matrix. Right. Um, yeah, I'm Darren Rule. Sorry. Uh, Darren Mil Milroy, Rolf Chad. Um, yeah, I think we broadly support the, the matrix approach to the application of uh, the taste policies and, and indeed future uh, application of, of policies relating to entertainment uses. Um, and, and indeed with there's been considerable experience of dealing with it over the last few years. Uh, I, th I think where we get into difficulties um, with the taste policies and where I think there is growing potential problems with the taste policies is the fact that a lot of entertainment, and I use the word broadly, uses, that is restaurants, bars, clubs, um, actually don't neatly fall into any one of the one category. And you get, we've got a growing, we see a growing tendency to say, well, actually, you're a bit of a mixture of all of them, so you're actually a sui generis use. You don't fall into any use per particular category, and we have to consider you very, very carefully on your own individual merits. Now, that's all great so far as aiming to protect uh, amenity, residential amenity, and, and general concerns over um, uh, wider environmental amenity. But it does give potential new entrants people who are actually going to add something to the West End entertainment offer, something of a difficulty, because when they go to their landlord to say, look, we've got this fantastic new offer, this, this new concept that we'd like to uh, introduce, then, well, what use do you actually fall into? Are you an A1 use or an A3 use or even a mix of A3 and A4 or even A5 takeaway? So that, that's, where, that's where we're getting problems, I think. There's problems between landlords knowing what to classify uses as, um, the local authority knowing what to classify, indeed, should they classify it as anything. So you get this sui generis use, and then it just falls down to really, well, well how big are you? And, and then, well, the taste, the taste thing is a good starting point, the taste matrix, without doubt. I think it's more how, it's, how flexibly it's applied. OK, thank you. That's useful. I, sorry, can I just add to the discussion there? I mean, obviously, we're just here just to, to listen primarily, but um, I would just like to, to state that, obviously, the matrix approach, I never really like to use the term matrix, but it is only the starting point, and it, it, it sets out which policy will be the policy that is applied. Um, and at present, um, we obviously still look at each individual scheme on its merits. Um, if you look at the, the matrix, I mean, it just basically says, well, it's taste eight, generally permissible taste nine may be permissible but that is still dependent on a whole range of, of factors so I, I just think it's worth just throwing into the pot that the, the matrix is very much the starting point um, and then also obviously you've, you've raised the issue of the use class order and I, I believe at present we, pri we look at what the primarily the main use is um, and obviously there's a whole issues around ancillary and what's ancillary um, and it is actually quite hard to tie down so that's an interesting point so I would be interested to know if anyone else has got any other views on that.